Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Stylosa and the guys over at PC Games N have again given us a pretty juicy amount of information here. They got access to Jeff during the Bilbao Fun and Serious Games Festival because I think Overwatch won an award there and Jeff went to collect the award. But we know Jeff put on like a little kind of panel there and he did various interviews. However, the guys at PC Games N have asked him some really good questions. These are honestly the kind of questions I would ask Jeff if Jeff would come and talk to me. That'd be beautiful. Imagine that. Jeff, come and talk to me. It'd be awesome. Anyway, this is what Jeff says on a couple of things. But the first thing we'll start off with is the events. Now, this is a really good question. So far, the seasonal events in year two have reoccurred just as they did in year one. Will that continue or, or do you have some surprises for us? What about lore events like Uprising? Um, which is a valid question, like, what about Uprising? If they just give us that again, that will be like, Blizzard, what are you doing? We, we don't want this again. We need something else, right? Well, Jeff says this. Obviously, Winter Wonderland is coming back. Well, we know that. This interview obviously took place before Winter Wonderland went live. And I think that's a good example of bringing an old event back with content that people love, but also adding new content. That's one direction we're going in. So this is good. This is confirmation. Yeah, we'll give you the same events, but we're going to try and give you a bit more content as well. Like we've got Yeti Hunt with this event, which is good for about 10 minutes of entertainment. <laughs> He then goes on to say, when it comes to Lunar New Year, that will be returning. It'll be renamed to Year of the Dog, we already knew this, instead of Year of the Rooster. So we'll be good there. Uprising is a bigger challenge because obviously that was very specific lore event. I think we have some interesting plans to evolve what we've done in Uprising, but I'm going to leave that a bit of a surprise right now. All right, so... I think, I think, I think, I think I was told somewhere that there are potentially some Moira voice lines that could work for Uprising. So maybe it'll be like the history of Moira. Maybe it'll be Moira's sort of like the way she left um, Overwatch or something like that. It could be some sort of Moira specific event. Um, but this is good news because Jeff is saying, yeah, we can't just give you the same event again. So that's a big thumbs up. We're also considering how to bring back Anniversary in a new way. It should have always been a mix of the new and the old. You use Uprising as an example. And even if we were to do some new stuff, there's a lot of players who never got to experience the original Uprising content. So we need to bring that back for them as well. Now, the thing with Uprising is, I upri when, when we first got Uprising, I think it is by far the best seasonal event we've had for in-game content, by far. Like, it was completely different it was just i thought it was fantastic right even if you don't agree with like pve and stuff like that in overwatch just the level of like complexity that added to the event was was like let's be honest way more than lucio ball right or something like that yeah so i i really loved it for that but what i wanted them to do is give us like a almost like a hollow deck like a star trek thing where we could go in and relive past missions that overwatch have taken part in so it would be good if this year's event uprising 2.0 is actually we can play the old event, which is Jeff has kind of confirmed here, but also we get to play the new one. And imagine if there was another one as well. Then imagine a few years down the line. I mean, I don't really agree with it taking this long for this kind of stuff to be added to the game because I'd love it if there was a whole catalog of sort of PvE related stuff we could do and group together and have fun that way. But imagine being able to just load in a mission. That'd be so cool. And it obviously gets rid of the whole idea of like traveling through time, doesn't it? Because you can just be like... Yeah, we went in and relived the mission in the hollow deck or whatever the hell they want to call it. So this is good stuff. This means Uprising, the next version of it, will have a different mission, basically, which is good, good stuff. And Anniversary is going to come back, but that's going to be more difficult to do because, well, I don't know, like, mm, that'll be interesting. So this is an awesome question and a very direct question. Finally, on toxicity, we've seen com some confusion on the question of one tricking. Can you clarify this for us? Is one tricking considered a toxic or actionable offense? And this is what Jeff says. Now, this is interesting. So he says, all in all, the game lets you pick whoever you want. It's not up to your teammates who you should play. I do think it's respectful to people to be willing to gel with the team composition, but you can't ban somebody it's not a bannable offense for just playing one hero, as long as you're trying your best to win with that hero. And I'll just finish the quote before we discuss this. I think the game gets in a very dangerous state when we tell you who you're allowed to play and not play with the game functioning like it does right now. The allure and fantasy of Overwatch is that there are 26 heroes and you can log in at any moment and be one of them. We should be trying to keep them all viable and all decent picks within a team composition. I mean, sometimes you're going to be countered, but we can't leave it at other players' discretion to decide what you should be doing. Now, 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 now. The thing with this, um, the line here, which it, it basically says, um, as long as you're trying your best to win with that hero, is very, very debatable because 
what is trying your best to one person that could be something completely different to another person and it's very very hot this kind of does highlight the issue with overwatch and like one trick ponies and people who are sort of forcing other people to conform to the way they play we've got it from the games director here you can just uh do whatever you like basically you can play whatever hero you want and it doesn't really matter the problem with this is right even if you are the greatest symmetra in the entire world or the greatest torbjorn or whatever if the enemy team counter you or you're playing on a map that isn't great in fact screw those examples i'll give you my example so if i'm playing moira okay i don't think moira is very good on Li Zhang gardens i think she's quite bad actually on that point it's very open it's very hard for you to bounce your balls around and keep like massive ball synergy on the go and all of that so i would change my hero to a zen yeah or an anna or whatever the hell right i would change because i think that's a better chance we've got of, of winning a Torbjorn main or a Symmetra main would just be like, oh, I'll just play anyway. You know, I'll just I'll just keep playing this hero because I enjoy playing this hero. And there's this duality, isn't there? There's the fun aspect to it. Those people are obviously having fun playing that hero. But then there's the other people on your team. And I'm always going to come down on the side of everybody playing together. Like, I guess my problem is, like, I, I view this from being in, like, an ideal world where everybody is playing together. Everybody can play all of the heroes. And it's like, okay, I'll play support this game. I'll play tank. And we build a proper team, not... I just play Torbjorn, so deal with it, guys. Like To me, that seems very anti-teamwork. But I'm afraid this might open a bit of a can of worms, especially seeing this comment from Jeff. But the fact is, you will not get banned for being a one-trick. Um, and Jeff doesn't want the game in its current state um, being dictated to you based on what heroes you can play. Now, what that means for the future, I don't know. Maybe we will get like a preferred role select system at some point. I don't know. But based off these comments, it kind of doesn't feel like it. Anyway, guys, this has been an Overwatch news update. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, then let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think about all of these topics. And there is a link to the um, interview here so you can go and read it in full detail because it does cover things like uh, Blizzard World and loot boxes and all that good stuff. All right, guys, I'm Insta Loser. You can follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming. Join the Discord as well, guys, which is discord.gg forward slash Unit Lost. And I will catch you on the next one. Toodaloo.